Hey everybody, Mike here with EverythingAboutConcrete.com. Today's video is going to be about a slab extension. We got about a 15 by 9, 6 inch concrete slab we're extending onto this existing slab. Now the existing slab there to the left, we're going to come back and repair and resurface that. So if you're not a subscriber, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can see how we do that. That thing's going to turn out fantastic. You're not going to believe what that looks like when we get done. But today's project is to get this formed up, get it all ready to go, and then we're going to get it poured tomorrow. So I'm going to show you on this video how we form it up, how we pour it, and how we finish it. And then my next video coming out will be about how we fix that other slab to make it look really nice. Now the homeowner got the sub base ready. So he dug all that, all that existing grass and sawed out. He put the gravel in. And then we came and we're laying the styrofoam, putting up the forms. We're going to put in the wire mesh and get it all prepped today. Up against the existing slab, we're going to put some a little thin piece of foam. It's called ISO strip. At least that's what we call it. So the just in case that slab on the left wants to move, the two slabs won't chip the edges together. So we'll have some foam in between them. And uh, then we're going to caulk all the edges when we're all done. So we get, we're get we getting the forms up here. We're getting everything set to grade. Again, it's about a six inch slab. You're not going to believe what we had to use to pour this thing. Look at this. We had to use a bobcat today. The access to this slab wasn't very good. And luckily for us, these guys were working out front doing some landscaping. And when we were discussing how we were going to get concrete out back, this guy just offered, he goes, well, I'll just use my skid steer if you want, no problem. And I said, sure. I go, I'd love to pay you to do that. So rather than rather than go rent a power buggy to do it, he just offered to help. And and that was really, really nice of him. So it's it makes it really cool when you got other contractors on the job that are willing to do something like that for you. So I, uh, I did pay him to do it. You know, he didn't want to take the money, but... <laughs> I made him take the money anyway so uh, it was anyway it worked out really really good for us that the bucket on that skid steer ended up holding it probably held about three or four wheel full wheelbarrow fulls so it, it made it pretty quick so right here what we're doing is I'm, I'm pulling the wire up what I want to show you guys is when you pull that wire up into concrete with three quarter inch aggregate and then you step on it a lot of you guys think it goes right back to the bottom, but it doesn't. The aggregate holds the wire up into the concrete once you pull that wire up. So as, as we keep pouring the concrete, we keep pulling the wire up into it. The wire stays up even if there's nothing under it. So that right there is proof in the pudding. I just wanted to show you guys that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm screeding that. I got about an 8 foot magnesium screed. Let me know down in the comments what you guys use for screeds. Do you like the magnesium ones? Do you use a 2x4? Um, do you use the walk behind screeds? Do you use a power screed? I mean, what do you guys use for screeds? Let me know down in the comments. You can see that white foam right there pretty good that I put up against that other slab. We glued it right onto it. Um, again, so that's if, if one slab wants to move and the other one doesn't, the, those edges aren't going to all break up right there. That's pretty standard practice for something like that. It's either that or you pin them together, you drill and pin them together so they lock into each other. But where the new one has styrofoam under it and the old one doesn't, we didn't want to pin them together like that. Got Tia on the job today, everybody. Tia's... She is working again this summer. She's a junior in college. She's got one more year, so she decided to come back and work this summer. Everybody say hi to Tia in the comments. So we're getting I'm getting it bowl floated. This stuff was setting up pretty quick today on us, actually. We're not there's not gonna be much time between pouring and finishing. So the finishing part is coming right up here in a in another minute or two, so make sure you stick around for that. You can see how that skid steer just puts the concrete right in there for us. So much easier than wheelbarrowing.
I'm getting the edges mag. Darren and T are breaking down the concrete, getting it leveled out with the rakes. And then I'm going to jump right on the screed and get it screeded. The homeowner is going to end up putting a, a nice hot tub on this part, this section here. So they're going to have a, I don't know, like an eight person hot tub on it. And then, you know, the other slab will be like a little bit of a sitting area, like a patio area where they have their cookouts and stuff like that. So once they get all the, the slab areas done and the landscaping done, it's going to be a pretty nice looking area out back here. What do you think the cost to do something like this is? Let me know down in the comments what your thoughts are. Just is it you think it's a uh, $1000, you think it's 2000, you think it's 4000? Let me know what you guys think. Give me a good guess as to what you think the cost is and then I'll tell you, I'll give you a couple weeks and then I'll tell you, I'll pin it up in the comments at the top what our cost was to do this. I just, I'd like to get an idea of what you guys think it might cost to do something like this. So T and Darren are going to finish filling that little extension over there. I'll get this screeded and then T is going to bull float here. And then we're going to have to jump right on finishing this thing. Be between the time it t took the truck to get to the job and then the time it takes to get it in the skid steer and get it all poured out, you know, it was probably, the concrete was probably at this point right here, oh, uh, going on an hour and a half old. So, and it was about 80 degrees today. So it's, it's setting up pretty good on us. Not, not like crazy fast, but enough to know that we're not going to have really much time at all in between pouring and waiting to finish this. makes it so much nicer having an extra hand on the job like with Tia bull floating out that's usually something that me and Darren would have to do so having her be able to take care of some of those things just makes our life so much easier Let me, how you guys are you having a hard time finding help or finding people to work I mean it, we are around here in Maine I, I'm kind of lucky I got some good people working for me but I hear it from other people all the time that they're just having a hard time finding help and that's got to make it hard for some of you guys that just can't find anybody to give you a hand. Let me know down in the comments too about that. What's, what's your situation like as far as getting some good help? You can see we gave this probably five minutes and we're right back on it. I got that funny float. I'm getting the surface all magged out. T is cutting in the edges with the edger. So this stuff's getting ready to go. And we're going to get the finish right on it. It's funny. I was just thinking that from all the time it takes to get the thing formed up and prepped and then get it poured and screeded, it literally takes about two minutes to put the finish on something like this. So the finishing part is actually, for us, it's the easy part. Um, it's all the other work that, that takes the most time. Now the homeowners here we were working for were really nice people. They're going to... They're going to want to put their name in this too. So we're going to give them a little section over their way on the left where they can put their, they actually put their kids' names in it. And I, I believe they put the date in it also. That's pretty standard. We have a lot of people that like to do that. They like to put their kids' hand, hand prints in it with a date and then their names under it. That's, that's always kind of cool. I'm cutting a joint right there because we know going from the big section to that little thin part it's going to crack right there so we're going to give it a place to crack right in that joint and then you know you got the wire mesh in there to hold it all together when it does crack so it doesn't want to lift or move I'm kind of showing Tia how to go around a curve with the edger that's a little bit different than going around something straight so you got to kind of tip the edger up on end so it doesn't dig in as you're going around the curve. So you can see the homeowner way over there on the left starting to starting to 
write his name and or his kids' names in there. And I'm jumping right on the broom. Darren's getting that last little section magged out, getting it ready for me to broom. The key with the broom here is just slow and steady, you know. You want to keep it at a fairly low angle and slow and steady. You don't want to stop and start. You don't want to pull it too fast. You don't want to jiggle it back and forth. That's all going to show in the broom marks. The size of the broom you use really, I mean, it really doesn't matter. I'm using a two footer here today. We have a three footer, we have a four footer, but for a slab this small, just, you know, a two footer is fine. The bristles on this one are kind of like a medium texture. They're, they're not like really, really soft, but they're not too firm either. So they leave, they leave a really nice broom finish in my opinion. And we don't steel trowel these. You know, exterior concrete in Maine, because we go through so many freeze and thaw cycles, we just mag float. We keep the surface open so we don't trap any air entrainment in the concrete. We, we have to put air in our concrete so it helps protect against freeze and thaw. So we'll mag float this out sometimes twice, but we don't steel trowel anything before we, before we broom it, just in case the steel really seals up the surface and we don't want to trap any air even though you're brooming right over it we've had trouble in the past like using a fresno or something like that so we don't even use a fresno up this way um, it's just from past experience we know that we run into trouble with scaling and peeling because of that on exterior concrete so there's another homeowner the other homeowner putting her name in the concrete over there that's pretty common and then I'm getting that last piece broomed out, getting around the curves. And then Tia is going to put the finish edge around it for us. So again, the, we're going to resurface and we're going to fix that, that other patio that Tia is on right now and resurface that, caulk the joints. That thing's going to come out absolutely beautiful. So make sure you come on back to see that next video to see what that's going to turn out like. And then... Uh, Again, if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead down there and hit subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you on the next one. hot tub pad today 15 by 10 pad for a hot tub plus a little extension to this slab we're going to come back and refinish and resurface that slab there but we just got the six inch pad for the hot tub done today that's it had to use a bobcat for access access around the house